Welcome to This Month in Dinosaurs, where this month we'll be talking about Sue the T-Rex being moved, a new sauropod dinosaur, plant-eating dinosaurs that actually preyed on crabs, and more. At the very end of last month, it was announced that Sue, the most complete T-Rex specimen to ever be found so far, will be moved from his home of 18 years in the entrance hall of the Field Museum, Chicago. Sue is set to be replaced by a much larger specimen, the Titanosaur Patagotitan. But Sue won't be moved far, she's going to be put up again upstairs in a new gallery. In addition to having her own private suite, Sue is also being reunited with her gastralia, the so-called belly ribs, that were positioned underneath the dinosaur's chest cavity in life. She will also have several other modifications made to her skeleton, and she will be updated according to her current understanding of T-Rex paleobiology. September has seen the arrival of a new sauropod dinosaur, a large member of the Brachiosaur group called Sauria Titan. Found in and named after the Sauria province of Spain, this dinosaur probably reached about 14 metres in length when it was alive. There is not a lot of material from the specimen, and about 15% of the individual was found. The bones that are known include parts of the limbs, hips and tail, and a tooth. The new animal will help paleontologists to have a more clear understanding of the evolution of this group as a whole, since Sauria Titan could provide more information on the development of Cretaceous titanosaurs in Europe from their older ancestors. A new study published this month shows some particular similarities between the skulls of young dinosaurs and birds. This may not seem surprising since birds are dinosaurs themselves, but the fact that their skulls resemble juvenile dinosaur skulls is worth noting. Birds possess a very uniquely shaped skull, with the bones at the back of the skull having a domed shape in order to contain their brain and large eyes. Now, scientists have realised that bird skulls have the same shape as the skulls of young, non-bird theropod dinosaurs. This is a good example of something called pedomorphism, in which an adult of a species of animal shares very similar characteristics to the juveniles and babies of the species' ancestors. The way in which this occurred in birds is due to the development of the brain in relation to the skull. In many groups of vertebrates, during the early developmental stages, the boundaries of the different skull bones exactly mirror the different regions of the brain. But later in life, the bone boundaries stop mirroring the brain regions and are affected by other factors. However, this study shows that the change does not happen to birds, and so the skull boundaries are always matching the boundaries of the different brain regions. This means that birds are keeping their baby skulls. This unusual development probably evolved so that birds could fill different niches that their older looking ancestors could not, and so helped with the success of the group as they adapted to new roles in their environment. The shape of bird skulls, allowing for a larger brain and larger eyes, therefore gave birds the advantage of being better able to see and follow moving objects during flight, which would have helped them in all sorts of ways. It is very possible that this case of pedomorphism was a large driving factor in the major success of birds as a group. Here in the UK, an important paleontological meeting took place this month, the 65th Symposium on Vertebrate Paleontology and Comparative Anatomy, or SVPCA. This year it was hosted in Birmingham, and the meeting is open to all sorts of people with an interest in the subject. The symposium first started in 1953, and ever since then it has been hosted in Britain, France or Ireland, with talks and research being presented each year. This year included talks and papers on all sorts, from ankylosaur skulls to fish evolution, as well as Darren Nash's textbook on the entire vertebrate fossil record, which is still in progress. This month also sadly saw the death of fossil preparator Mike Getty, who had been working on a newly uncovered Triceratops fossil in the Denver area. It was reported that Getty passed away after becoming ill at the excavation site of the dinosaur in Thornton. Getty has been responsible for many fossil discoveries over his lifetime, and prepared a great deal for display in museums and for research. He even had a dinosaur named after him, Utah Ceratops Getty. He worked all across the world, and according to his friends, had a great passion for exploring the Earth and its history. Recently, a very interesting paper was published that examined the diets of hadrosaur dinosaurs. This group has always been assumed to have been herbivorous, feeding on conifers and ferns due to the shape of their skulls and teeth. However, fossilised faeces, called coprolites, from hadrosaurs showed that in addition to eating plants, these animals were also snacking on crabs. The coprolites revealed traces of plant matter as would be expected for the dinosaurs, but in amongst them were also fragments of crab shells. The paleontologists who made the discovery suggest that hadrosaurs only ate crabs and other small animals at certain times of the year, however, and certainly their main diet would still have been plants. Traces of rotten wood were also present in the coprolites, meaning that the dinosaurs probably broke open rotting driftwood in order to access the crustaceans inside. 
This discovery might seem like a big surprise, seeing as hadrosaurs have always been considered completely herbivorous. However, many living animals that are thought to be herbivores actually consume other animals on occasion, such as the example of a cow eating baby chickens. This discovery just goes to show how we should not assume that we know everything about any prehistoric animal, and that many ideas we have about dinosaur behaviour can change fairly significantly once new data becomes available. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about the wonderful world we live in, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss more videos from us.